Are you interested in the COMT gene mutation? Do you suffer from depression, anxiety or insomnia and wonder if it's related? Well that's the topic of this video today. I'm going to talk about the symptoms associated with the COMT gene mutation and I'll explain why changes in the COMT gene lead to these symptoms. Finally, I'll talk about diet, lifestyle and supplement changes you can make to help support your COMT enzyme activity. If you haven't met me before, I'm Dr. Janelle Sinclair and on this YouTube channel we discuss natural strategies for depression and anxiety. If you're interested in that topic, subscribe and hit the bell button so you're notified about our new weekly videos. So let's get into this. So COMT stands for catechol o methyltransferase and the COMT gene encodes for an enzyme that breaks down catecholamines and the catecholamines are dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline. COMT also breaks down the estrogen hormone. So to really understand um, the COMT gene and its effect on the body, you really also need to know the function of dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline. And dopamine is a reward-giving neurotransmitter. And noradrenaline and adrenaline are the stress hormones, the fight and flight hormones. Changes in the COMT have been found to be linked with depression, anxiety, autism, panic disorder and bipolar disorder. Now there's quite a few different genetic SNPs for COMT, but the one that you really want to look for and the one that's most well researched is COMT V158M or VAL158MET. So the VAL and MET are the amino acid changes. And the RS number for this genetic SNP is RS4680. So if you've got the normal SNP, you'll have the code GG. Um, if you're heterozygous for the SNP, you'll have, it'll be AG. And if you're homozygous mutant, or you have a mutation or a genetic weakness in the SNP, your code will be AA. When it comes to most genetic SNPs, the normal SNP, the, the most common um, code that's found in the population is usually the best one to have and the one that would be ideal to have. But with COMT it's actually not that simple. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences between being um, homozygous wild type or having the normal SNP versus having the mutant or two copies of the, the weak genetic SNP. So when it comes to having two normals, um, which is most common in the population, this results in an enzyme which breaks down dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline fast. So I just thought I'd show you this visually. So let's just imagine your brain is, um, yeah, or your cells are a bucket and you've got neurotransmitters being made and that the water coming in is that in those neurotransmitters. And then you've got holes in the bucket which represent your neurotransmitters being broken down. So in someone that's um, feeling balanced, not anxious, but they're happy, um, good mood, motivated, they'll have a good balance between the bucket never being empty and the bucket never being full. But what happens if your neurotransmitters are being made at the normal rate, so the water's going in, but the neurotransmitters are being broken down too fast. So there's, there's too many holes in the bucket. Well, the bucket becomes empty and you can have low levels of neurotransmitters. Well, this is the case when it comes to the, the normal um, SNPs, the wild type for the COMT. The enzyme is breaking down neurotransmitters fast. So dopamine is getting... Um, broken down fast and you can end up with low dopamine levels. So the symptoms of a dopamine deficiency include a lack of interest in life, decreased motivation and drive, depression, an inability to feel pleasure, fatigue, inability to focus and impaired concentration, poor memory and Parkinson's disease.
So I've created a video previously on dopamine deficiency symptoms and if you're feeling like those symptoms sound like you, maybe go and check out that video. So if you've got the normal SNP for COM-T, it actually can lead to low dopamine and can increase the, the risk of depression, poor concentration and fatigue. Okay. So let's look at the opposite scenario in which you've got um, the genetic weakness in the COM-T. So you've got two copies of um, the mutant SNP. And the, this leads to the enzyme breaking down dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline slowly. So visually you can think of um, your neurotransmitter being made at a normal rate. The water's going into the bucket, but the the neurotransmitters are being broken down too slowly so there's very small holes in the bucket and this is leading to high levels of neurotransmitters and so what happens when you've got too much noradrenaline adren and adrenaline levels well this leads to high stress levels agitation anxiety panic attacks and insomnia so if having two copies of the normal SNP can raise your um, risk of depression, poor concentration and fatigue. And having two copies of the mutant SNP or weak um, genes can lead to an increased risk of stress, anxiety and insomnia. Then what's the ideal scenario when it comes to your genes? Well, it's, it, the ideal scenario is that you're heterozygous for COM-T. So I've put this in here because a lot of people go, I'm heterozygous, I need to do something to lower my dopamine levels. No, you don't. My belief is that um, being heterozygous means that you have an intermediate level of dopamine and noradrenaline and adrenaline, which is uh, much better than having too much or having too little. But let's go on and talk about what you can do um, if you've got a genetic weakness and you've got some symptoms that seem to be correlating with it. So if you have two copies of the wild type SNP, um, the, the normal SNP, this means that, we'll just go over this again, you've got fast COM-T activity and you're, you're break, you may be breaking down your neurotransmitters faster um, leading to low dopamine and this can lead to increased risk of depression, fatigue and ADHD. Now there is an advantage of having this genetic SNP and it means that you can perform well under stress because your body is very good at getting rid of all your stress hormones. But if you do have some um, depression or fatigue or poor focus, um, what can you do to help um, balance um, this, this enzyme in your body and improve your symptoms. Well firstly um, one of the considerations is drinking um, more um, green tea and also um, possibly a little bit of coffee as well because the caffeine will be good at um, what it does is it slows down the Conti um, enzyme and it means that you can hold on to more of your neurotransmitters. There's also a supplement um, called EGCG and it's a green tea extract and, and that can be also good at doing it. So exercise is another good thing for you to do is to get in, um, your body pumping, get the um, endorphins and um, or the adrenaline going in the body as well. Also consider um, ensuring that you've got enough protein in your diet one gram um, per kilogram of body weight is a good um, thing to aim for. So if you're 60 kilograms, to have 60 grams of protein a day. Because the, you need amino acids and the amino acids come from protein. And it's tyrosine specifically that is the precursor for making dopamine. And I have created a video on this um, and other ways to increase dopamine levels in the body so you could check that video out but also consider L-tyrosine um, supplementation and or Macuna and these will help um, increase the dopamine levels in your body so this is 
ideal for you if you are struggling with symptoms um, of, of depression and low motivation. Possibly also um, using some adrenal support is um, another good option for you. So let's move on and talk about the scenario in which you've got two copies of the weak genetic SNP for the COMT. And as I said previously, this results in decreased COMT activity and this enzyme is between 25 to 40% um, reduced in its activity compared to the wild type. So what this means is that you break down your dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline slow, slower, which means you can end up having high levels um, of these neurotransmitters. There is an advantage of this, it means you have better memory, you can have higher IQ, can get more pleasure out of life and be more creative. Unfortunately though, often don't do well under stress because under stress the adrenaline levels um, rise and your enzyme, your body's just not so good at getting rid of these stress levels. And there has been shown, um, studies have shown that if you've got this genetic weakness, that it can increase your risk of anxiety and panic disorder. Now keep in mind, this genetic code doesn't mean you have to have anxiety. It's just more of a high, increased risk if, if environmental factors and lifestyle factors aren't um, ideal. Because I personally have this genetic weakness um, and, you know, I do have a higher IQ and I do have um, better memory, but I'm not so um, good under stress. But I don't have anxiety. So don't let, let this, um, you think that this is a life sentence because it's just your genetic code. You can do lots in your, <clears throat> in your lifestyle um, and environment to re reduce the risk. Okay, so what can you do? Number one, stress management is a big thing for you, what you need to do. So um, diaphragm breathing, mindfulness, um, doing nice walks, just um, keeping good boundaries in your life, just doing it um, nice and slow. Uh, also um, doing stimulating activities in the morning so that at night time um, you're not you haven't um, built up all your stress hormones and you can't sleep so yeah consider calming activities at night like massage or Epsom salt bath sauna and diaphragm breathing most people with this COMT code are thinkers and find act so make sure that you find activities that stimulate your brain or you'll be bored and also make sure that you balance life because we do seem to have workaholic tendencies okay so here's some lifestyle considerations um, avoid phenols and um, which are found in cleaning products household chemicals and cosmetics because phenols seem to slow down the COMT activity further so if we can avoid these and get rid of those um, the chemicals we um, we don't affect our, um, our slow down the COMT enzyme so for some people they may be sensitive to high phenol foods so phenols can be found in cleaning products and cosmetics but they there are also foods that are high in phenols so if you are quite anxious and you have this um, genetic weakness then you may consider trialing um, a low phenol diet um, also limit green tea, coffee and caffeine because it's believed that the caffeine slows down the COMT enzyme further. So I've personally, once um, I got my genetic test done and found this out, I just um, stopped drinking um, coffee altogether and I suggest that you should do that too. So I've created a video um, on anxiety and caffeine and so if you want some more information on that um, watch that video so here's some supplementation um, considerations for someone with a slow COMT um, enzyme so consider magnesium and vitamin C because these actually support the COMT activity Consider adaptogenic herbs because this will help control your stress hormones and um, balance them. Also phosphatidylserine is a really great um, 
supplement for lowering stress levels. You can take it at night to help you sleep or if you t have a tendency for high stress during the day as well, you can um, take it during the day to balance out those stress levels. So usually 100 to 300 milligrams is the standard dose for that. Some people with two copies of the Comte mutant or weak SNP may be sensitive to methylating agents, so things like methylfolate and methyl B12. So I would just be mindful of this. So if you've started a new multivitamin or some um, new B, a B complex, but it's just seen, you just feel like you've, your anxiety's increased or something, um, consider that it could be due to the B vitamins in that supplement. Um, also, people that have the MTHFR um, genetic weakness and you think that you should really do well on methylfolate and methyl B12 but you just don't quite feel so good on it, you might feel a bit anxious or you might get more angry um, or you might um, it might increase um, insomnia. It may be because of your COMT genetic weakness. So my suggestion is if you are sensitive to it, use folinic acid or hydroxy B12 instead of the methylfolate and instead of the methyl B12. So there is some controversy because COMT is um, the NT part of COMT actually is methyl transferase. So it requires a cofactors for COMT is actually methyl groups, and so it's you know to increase the COMT activity. Some people are saying that you should um, improve your methylation in the body. Well, yes and no. The problem is that that is great, but the problem is that um, dopamine um, is as levels are increased in the body through um, improving methylation. So by improving methylation, then you can increase your dopamine, and then if you've got a slow COMT enzyme. Um, and you're not very good at breaking down dopamine, noradrenaline and adrenaline, it's, it's just a little bit of a vicious um, circle. So it's not that you shouldn't have methylfolate or methyl B12, but just be a little bit cautious because you could be sensitive to it. My last recommendation is that you avoid EGCG, which is a green tea extract. If you're interested in genetic testing, I suggest that you check out my video on genetic testing for depression, where I go over 40 different genetic SNPs that are involved in mental health. I've also created videos on the MTHFR um, genetic SNP, and one video on the health conditions and symptoms that often correlate with that genetic weakness and also one on treatment um, considerations. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you next time.